In this recording, I'm going to demonstrate how to do frame-by-frame -frame animation. I'm going to begin by inserting a new symbol, which I'm going to call GR stick figure. Now in this particular case I am going to turn on object drawing which I rarely do but today I want it. So I'm going to put object drawing on because I do not want all the pieces of my drawing to become one piece. I'm going to use my line tool. I'm going to go into properties. I'm going to set the color to black. I'm going to set the thickness to 3. And I'm going to draw a very basic stick figure. And you can see that I'm getting an object drawing because whenever I draw an object I get a blue box around it. You'll understand why I want the object drawing in a minute. But I all want them all to be separate parts. Then I'm going to put a simple circle, holding the shift key to constrain it as my stick figure's head. So here I have my stick figure, but each part is separate. That's important to me. I'm going to select all the parts, and then I'm going to go to Modify, Timeline, Distribute to Layers. When you're doing animating, everything that moves has to be on its own layer. Notice that when I do this, layer 1 is actually now empty. The circle is empty. There's nothing in it. Everything else has gone to a new layer. It would be helpful for me to identify what each layer is. And sometimes it can be hard to tell, so if you just make them visible one at a time, It makes it easier to identify. So I've taken a few minutes and I've gone through and I've named each part of the layer because that really helps me to identify each one. Now in layer one, the head's really not going to move, so I'm going to make this last, we're going to make it last a second and repeat. I always like the last frame to be exactly the same as the first, so I can convert these all to keyframes and now they persist. What I want to do is I want to have the figure do jumping jacks. I'm going to use my free transform tool and it's important when you're moving something to make the pivot point right where it's going to be pivoting so we're going to do that. But here I like to break it about in the middle Should be on frame oh, I'm on frame 13. I want to be on frame 12. And you can see it identifies it here. That's your frame number. Again, I'm going to put in my keyframe. Now at the top, this will be the top of his movement. I'm going to not going to have him move up and down here. I'm going to have him move up and down in the main timeline. But at the top, I don't really need to worry about changing his head or his neck. Okay, I want the left arm. Got to pivot it right there. I want the left arm by his head. I want the right arm, again with the pivot point, by his head. 
I want the right leg. Out. And I want the left leg. Oops, see what happens if you don't move it? Control Z. Move your pivot points. Okay, so that's the top of my jumping jack. And I'm going to want to do the midpoints. I'll put in my keyframes. Now it's helpful to know where everything else was. So I'm going to turn on my onion skin. I want to know where I started, so I'm going to take it all the way to frame one and where I end up. So I'm going to take it all the way to the next frame. So that shows me where the other points are. So that way I don't go too far when I pivot it here. So now I can select my left arm, change my pivot point, move it about halfway up, change my right arm, move my pivot point, move it about halfway up, choose my leg, move my fit pivot point, move it about halfway, take the other leg, move the pivot point, Move it about halfway. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's put more keyframes in at the midpoint over here. Insert my keyframe. Now here, I'm going to want to be able to see midpoint and end again we go about halfway. We have another setting down here. You can turn off onion skinning. This can just onion skin outlines. They're different colors and they're a little thinner. Sometimes it's easier to use those to tell where things were at. So again I'm going to want to move it down to the halfway points. So I'm going to click on a body part. Move it down, click on a body part, move it down. The key for the pivot point retained from the last keyframe. I didn't, I didn't need to set it again. Move it down and move it down. Now I'm going to turn all my onion skinning off. I'm going to test this. It's a little jerky. I could go further and make it smoother. by adding more keyframes. But for the purpose of this exercise, I'm not going to. The other way I could make this smoother would be by adding tweening. But you don't typically do that for frame by frame animation. So I'm just going to let it persist like this. No, it would be smoother if I put in more keyframes. Now I'm going to take my stick figure. I'm going to put them on my stage. And I'm going to put, I'm going to make this persist for 96 seconds. And now, if we think about it, at the top, I am actually going to want to view my rulers here because I want to draw. A guideline to where that might where he's coming back to. He should be in frame 12 at the top, and so I'm going to want him to I want a keyframe in here. I'm going to want him to move up a bit at frame 24. He should be back down on the line. 
I should have put in my keyframe first. Actually, an easy way to do this is to select the whole thing. Here I'm going to go ahead and put in a classic tween. I like the classic tween because it lets me put in my keyframes just by clicking. So I'm moving every 12 frames. So in frame 24, back on the line. 36. Up. 48. Back on the line. 60. Up a bit. 72. Back on the line. 84. Up a bit. Back on the line. Okay, we can test them here. It's not perfect, but you can see that we've got and moving up and down with it, frame by frame animation. It's decent to have it really smooth. I'd add more keyframes, but you get to see how you can use the onion skinning to help you get the motion just right and your pivot point. So there is your frame by frame animation using onion skins.